Okay, my atheist brethren. Let's talk about death. Dun, 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 dun. Let's talk about death. So, first thing, you are offering the idea, or I am putting forth the notion, that death is a philosophical problem. It is a conundrum, particularly, particularly for you, the atheist. And you are answering with me, as far as I can tell, all, all of you are saying, it is not. Now, the only thing I can assume by your answer is that you are under the age of 45. Why is that? Because when you are young, it isn't a problem. Let's say you're 25 years old. You think about death exactly never. And it's not a problem. You can solve the problem of your mortality any old intellectual way you want. Why? Because it isn't a reality. It's some sort of theoretical far-off land that you're going to visit someday, maybe. It isn't something you actually have to grapple with in any meaningful way. Now, let's fast forward 20-some-odd years, and we get to me, the old man. I am over the age of 45, and death is not some sort of theoretical you know, abstraction no longer. You start to feel it in your body as an oncoming reality. It is something you actually have to grapple with. You actually have to deal with. Because it's becoming very real to me. It is, you can feel it. You know, I don't exercise as much as, as well as I used to. I gain weight easier. My hair is turning gray and I'm slowing down noticeably. Each year I feel weaker and slower and I can feel the physical deterioration in my body. It is no longer theory from far off. It is something happening. And, consequently, it is also, ha your, the years start going a lot quicker. You know, I have a Facebook, I just got on Facebook last year, last December, and uh, one, of my, one of my college roommates who was in my band, his daughter is now at her prom. I hadn't seen him in like 10, 15 years. Didn't even realize 10, 15 years had gone by. Looking at his Facebook page, his daughter's going to the prom, like, what, what the hell, where did that time go? And I'm not alone like that. And it happens to us, to everybody I know. We're like, oh my God, this is, this is, I'm getting old really quick and it's coming. So, there is a problem here. And if you are going to lead your atheist, your atheist peers, if you're going to lead your atheist minions into their bold, without God future, you are going to have to on some level recognize that maybe it's not something for you that's an issue. Okay? But for 99 out of 100 people, it really is an important issue. And you are going to have to solve it for your atheist peers. Because you are going to have to come up with some sort of something that gives the atheist some real tangible peace of mind. Now you say, for me the Christian, for me the believing Christian, well, your, your religion is a fake. You're believing a fairy tale. Okay. For the argument's sake, I'm not entirely certain that that makes any difference whatsoever. You know, for me, the believing Christian, okay, when with, with the death is becoming a fast coming oncoming reality, and I can face it with almost total peace of mind because I'm going to the Father and I'm going to live forever in glory. Hallelujah. You say, well, that's, that's a lie. I don't know if that matters. I 100% I believe it, okay? 100% believe that, to the point of death, to the point of, you know, would you take a bullet and, or renounce that? No, i take the bullet. I believe it that much. Well, you're crazy. Okay, irrelevant. It still solves the problem for me, the Christian. Now, what I mean is it gives me 100% peace of mind in the face of that oncoming uh, oblivion. Whether that's an illusion or not, does that matter? I don't think so. Am I wrong? I don't think that matters. I really honestly don't. Because I believe it 100%. So it gives me almost total peace of mind. Now, take the atheism, the, what started this conversation. Keep in mind, this is just a conversation. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to win against you atheists. I'm just trying to, you know, have a real talk about this. You go, you're an atheist and you go to the funeral. And you got your, this woman there, she just lost her 10-year-old son, she's grieving terribly, and you go up to her and you say, you know, what exactly? Is, what are you going to say? You know, ah, don't worry about it. You know, it's just like before he was born, he's completely nothing. It's just cessation of being, no big deal. 
it's not going to go over all that well. You know, that's all I'm saying. There, there's, if you're going to really help your atheist peers, if you're going to be a leader in the atheist community, and you're going to really lead your people to the atheist promised land where there's no need of God whatsoever and you've solved all of the potential philosophical and psychological problems that have presented itself, you're going to have to deal with that honestly. And saying it ain't an issue isn't going to really do it because it might not be an issue for you, but I guarantee you that's not okay around the boards. It's going to be an issue for some of the people. And that's exactly what, you know, if you read Camus, that's exactly what he spent most of his time dealing with. And most of the existential atheistic philosophers, and this is just an aside, but that's part of why I became a Christian, because I started reading them and I recognized, you know, that they had no real answers. They tried to solve that problem, and these were some of the best minds in the, you know, in the history of the last 200 years, and they didn't come up with really anything good. You know, different variations on facing it with integrity and courage, the meaninglessness of life is everything and all. And that's really just not good enough. I mean, that's cold comfort. Richard Dawkins solves the problem by not, by, by not addressing it and, and not going deep enough into it. You guys are solving the problem by pretending that it's not a problem. But I'm telling you it is. And maybe not for you, who we're having this conversation, but philosophically, it is a problem for a lot of people. And if you're going to help people in your, you know, in your atheist vision, if you're gonna if you're gonna lead your atheist people into the promised land, you are going to have to help them overcome or make sense of or deal with in some sort of tangible way that brings some sort of peace of mind the reality of death. That's all I'm talking about. That's it. So Amen. It's a cool talk. Uh, uh, interested in your response. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.